Yeah, um, I just want to give a shout out to our crowd. I mean, I want all of them to be my friends. They are so fun. They got the, I told our players, you're responsible for the student fans and I'm responsible for the seat backs. And you guys got my crew going today, um, yelling and cheering. And what a great environment for women's basketball again. It was really awesome. And we, this game means a lot to a lot of people. Um, it's not just another game. It's a Carolina Duke. We know that. Um, and. You know, our, our guys really, I thought, defensively clamped down and were hard to, were hard to uh, score on. I just really appreciate that they stay coachable. Obviously, we made some adjustments at halftime that they, they locked into and did it. Um, and then we just got a bunch of gamers. You know, Alyssa was, do you mind if I share? She was on a hooked on an IV this morning. Um, you know, she's COVID negative, she's strep negative, but she's, uh, I got a, that text first thing in the morning and I was like, oh God. Um, and then I saw her a couple hours later, and I was like, we're all right. She'll be all right. Um, and then, I mean, I'm glad Deja Kelly's a Tar Heel. So that's all I got. Could you talk about the stretch when they tied it in the third quarter, and then Paulina had a couple of twisting drives, and then she assisted on another Alyssa bucket. That seemed to turn the tide. Can you talk about that stretch? Yeah, so defensively they're really good, and they keep mixing up what they were doing. So it's, sometimes they were switching screens, and as soon as we – Felt like they were switching them. We would try to pick on them with Alyssa, and then they would not switch. Um, and what we really asked our guys to do is to play with space and, and to hunt, um, hunt assists. And when you think about other people, um, you'll find that oh gosh, I have an angle to the rim myself. So uh, Paulina really is is a, t a tough guard, uh, obviously, and we trust her a lot out there. Um, I think we went nine for ten at some point in the third quarter. Um, we haven't gone nine for ten in a while, so I, I remember all of those. Um, but I also remember the, the defensive tip balls and the, the communication and um, you know, that, the combination of good offense, good defense gave you the little run you needed in a game like this. Y'all had two double-digit leads there in the first quarter and then the third one was in the fourth. What was the difference in being able to hold on to the second? Yeah, less game left. <laughs> the, the first, the first uh, these guys came out great. I mean, I think we, we knew they were going to pressure us and I, I, you know, we wanted to break pressure to score. Um, we knew that a stop, we wanted to lead to a score. We wanted them on their heels right away. We didn't want to walk into this game. Uh, and they did that, you know, and then uh, they started to, like any good team, kind of find their way and chip back. Um, and then in the, in the third, going into the fourth, um, that was just a, a group putting their, hand, putting their heads together, putting their hands together and saying, it's go time, you know, and I think we said that at immediate timeout, like, it's go time now, guys, and they went. Courtney, what can you say about sort of the collaborative effort in the post from Destiny, Allie, Alyssa, and Anya. I mean, I, I think back to before the Arizona game last year, you said the theme of that game was build the wall. Was yeah. that somewhat similar to this game tonight? You know, when you – Kennedy Brown is a very good post player. We, we know that. Uh, she's, she's really big. You know, she played 31 minutes and, and only scored two points. So that kind of speaks to itself in terms of the activity that our post gave. And, and they, they did their job, and then our everybody else around them did theirs. Um, you know, and so with the exception of 30, we did a really good job on all of them. But yeah, the post defense, you know, it's well written that we're undersized in the post, but um, it's not written enough how tough we are, you know, in there and how we know it has to be a collective. And, and that's okay. We, we, don't, we don't worry about that. Like, that's who we are, and, and we're going to be collective and, and guard together. Did, did, so I have a question for Deja. Um, the kiss there at the end, just tell me the story behind what you were thinking. Um, I think that it was just, you know, I think it was a very timely shot, the one that I hit, um, big shot, and, uh, you know, she was guarding me kind of tight, so I was just, it was just like a, it was a message, we'll just say it was a message, um, a friendly one. Did you feel like yeah. you were playing with a little extra edge tonight? It certainly looked like it. Absolutely. Um, it's Duke. I think all of us were. Um, we all knew the, the um, how big this game was for, for us, for Carolina fans, and we just wanted to give our fans, the fans that we brought, um, a show, so. Yeah, it definitely meant a lot more. Coach, uh, that's the wins in a row for you against Duke. I think the third longest thing uh, uh, for you guys in your history against Duke. Just, does it feel like a bit of a watershed moment in terms of, you know, the Jackson in row? You know, beating, you know, beating Notre Dame at home and then beating NC State at home and then beating Duke at home all in a row, um, that, that, I can't get away from the collective there. You know, you're sitting at 0-3, games that we had a chance to win all of them. Um, and you're looking at what's ahead, right? You see all those games, and um, you know I don't, I don't know how many I don't know how many times you've gotten NC State and Duke back to back. I don't know how many times they've been ranked back to back, um, and I don't know how many times that those games were won by the Tar Heels back to back. So this is the first 
Well, see, that's why we bring Dana. Because she does that. Well, this is the first time. So, um, yeah, that, that's really special. We know, especially being here last weekend with our alums, we, we know that this program is about a whole lot of people, right? And, and our job is to, to ensure that it's in a good place while we're here. Um, and I think we're doing that. What was the issue that kept the race um, on the high pool and kept, kept her out of the second half? Yeah, we're it's it's late January with a whole bunch of old ladies, so we are um, you know we're we're limping along at times, um, you know. So she's got her own aches and pains, but uh, Z gave us uh, great minutes that was helpful. Des gave us some minutes in there as well, so you know she's she, she played a bunch tonight. I thought yeah, twenty eight that's that's a lot for her, you know, um, you know, and they all were what we needed when we needed them. Coach, uh, seven made field goals in the first half, and then nine in the I mean third quarter. I mean what changed at halftime? Mm -hmm. What what switch was flipped? Uh, yeah, let's go through that. Well, I appreciate you already that you didn't mention that we scored three in the whole second quarter, <laughs> because I did. Um, but uh, partly, I think, like I said, I think we really talked about um, really spacing them out and using Alyssa as a um, as either a, a screen and roller or a spacer, depending on how they were defending it. Um, which I think really opened up their eyes um, to what they needed. Ball moved a little bit better, and we made we made more shots because of it. Um, Deja made some big shots, Toddy made a big shot, obviously this around the room was dangerous tonight, I mean, I think she was 8 for 11. Um, so again, these guys are a group that in, at halftime, I, I can just tell them exactly what I need them to do, and they try really hard to do that. And I think we like our second half performances. And then just to clarify here, it was uh, the media timeout in the third quarter where it's 33-31, is that where you said it's go time? No, or? right before the fourth. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean 31 to 33, keep that one to yourself too. <laughs> Alyssa, could you take me through your day? Was there a point where you thought you might not be able to play? How were you feeling when you woke up? There was just no option for me. I'm not <laughs> missing out on an opportunity to beat Duke and just an opportunity to play again with my teammates. There's nothing like it, and I'm not going to take a moment of it for granted. So if I can get healthy and I can play, I'm going to play. So you just felt a little team. sick? or? Yeah, just just a little bit, but we had a quick, uh, good turnaround throughout the day, so felt better instantly. Alyssa, uh, Michael Jordan had his flu game. Obviously, he went to UNC. Uh, I mean, was this your flu game? Wow, comparing me to a great is wow. I'll remember that one. Thank we'll you. Say it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll say it, but no more sure, flu. We're not having any more. Right, definitely my version of a flu game. Just trying to get as many assists, steals, being active, um, just doing the things that I do every day, and those are the stuff I'm gonna bring, whether I have the flu or not. Did you feel winded tonight? Oh no, I felt like I could run for days. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so serious, I just... Our trainer said you might, she might need more rest, and I said, okay. <laughs> for Good. Andrew, the players, coaches have already talked about the fans. Um, I mean, I think that's the loudest I've ever heard. <laughs> the students, um, it's amazing. Um, I think it's more personal for us just because this is something that we built as players. Um, coming here, this is what we were trying to build Carolina back to do. Um, and, you know, having players like Aubrey, having Trinidad James, just seeing that support that we're getting um, here in our gym, uh, it just it just means a little more. And it, it makes us want to play harder and wants, wants us to give us, them a show. Um, but yeah, I, I couldn't even hear myself think. And it was so loud. But um, yeah, like it just—it's surreal how how much this place has grown in Carmichael Arena, um, and we just plan on having that for the rest of the season. And that support doesn't stop outside of the gym. Like I was in class today, and I had three classes, and I had just countless students when I was going through the business school. Like, listen, good luck tonight. We're gonna be there. We're cheering yeah. so loud. Oh, I'm bringing this sign. Alyssa, I can't wait to watch you play. So just the continued support is something that you just can't find. I don't think you find that anywhere else. I yeah, I was at on my workout this morning, and we were doing our post stretch, and this undergrad said, "Go Tar Heels, be Duke." And then all the class was like, "Huh?" And I was like, oh, "I'm supposed to." I was wearing not Carolina gear for a reason, but um, but yeah, I, I want to. I think you're right, Mitchell. It's a big deal to have that many fans there, and um, I mean, I just I, I'm. I don't even know how to thank them, but it felt real. Like it felt like these guys are totally, and I was worried because men were home. We were home Sunday, men were home, men are home again Saturday. It, we just, we had a lot of home games for the two programs. And I said to one of our good, good supporters, I said, I'm just a little worried because we've had so many home games. And they said, it's Carolina women's basketball. It's a thing. I said, well, good, I hope you're right. And they were right. <laughs> For Alyssa and Deja, what did Kennedy tell you when she fouled out with, I think it was 45 seconds or something like that remaining? What did she tell you on the huddle? Uh, yeah, she was just like, my bad. Um, we were like, we got you. Like, you're good. Uh, 
mistakes happen. We're just like, don't do that again. <laughs> that's the best <laughs> thing. Yeah. That's the best thing about having teammates, though, is that we were able to pick her up and we knew that what she brings, and we just had to finish it out. Mm -hmm. Has, have you ever seen that before? A player picks up four fouls in one quarter. Yeah, but it's fine. She said she won't do it again, so we we trust her. We're gonna choose to leave that. Hey, Alyssa, could you talk about your role there in the second half? Uh, Courtney was talking about the role she wanted you to play. Can you talk about how that played out? Yeah, I think my role was just making sure that. Duke's defense knew that I was making a presence everywhere I was, whether that was setting a contact ball screen, rolling down to the block, posting somebody. There was one play where I sealed through DK, and I was like, go, go, go! And she went and scored the layup, so I got that unmarked assist, which is great. <laughs> so just trying to make everybody's job a little bit easier is the role that I love to fill. So. Coach, a lot of college basketball is about playing your best and peaking at the mm -hmm. right time. There's still a long way to go, so how do you make sure stays in the right mindset and keeps playing, if not better and better. Yeah. Well, we're healthier than we were when we started. We, we practiced so minimally. It was a bummer for a lot of the preseason. So I know people are loving how we're defending. It's like, well, we have finally had practice, you know, so that's helpful. Um, and so we're much healthier than we were. Um, and then, you know, it, you don't, if you have to coach grit and if you have to coach competitiveness to sustain that, you've recruited poorly. Right, like I know what I'm getting in these guys, right? Um, but we're also, I can just remind them that we scored three point three total baskets in the second quarter, right? This this group has to, um, we're going to have to, offense is going to have to be better, and we're going to have to make more shots, right? And that's, I'm speaking to two in particular. You know, we've got to make more shots, and so some of that is them uh, finishing, and some of that is them getting shots for other people, um, so that the shots are easier, right? But um, you know, I, luckily. I mean, I have to actually kick them out of the gym. Like, they're not allowed in at certain times. So it's, it's never complacency with this group, or for me. That, that's just, that would be, I don't know what would happen if that was the case. It would be ugly. It would be. <laughs> Benji, what's the difference between the, those last three losses of the streak and the four uh, wins that you guys have put together? Uh, what's been the difference? Um, I think it's just our mentality as a team, as a group. We kind of understood, or we're starting to understand what it really takes. You know, we know the ACC is hard. It's hard to win. Um, but we also know that those are three games that we should have and could have won. Um, so really just like looking inward and really focusing on what we do best individually and collectively um, and just making sure that shows on the floor. You know, we, we had good practices together, but then really having it translate in game. And I think that that's really been what's been happening. And, you know, we're all like we got each other's back. So when everyone one's not bringing their piece, we, someone else has to step up and, and, and vice versa, um, I think. but. I think all, just all of us, just really having the same goals and the same mindset going into these games, um, I think it's been shown. If, if somebody told you, uh, Courtney, that you'd out-rebound State and Duke, <laughs> would you have expected that, and how did you do it? You know, uh, well, the first, I didn't, we didn't out-rebound uh, NC State, Lissa did. Um, yeah. <laughs> but the, uh, yeah, you know, the activity that these guys have played with, that was our one defensive key. You know, as you guys have picked up on, I'm pretty cerebral with them, so I was, I, usually I'm pretty thorough with our prep. and. They walked into the locker room today, it was just the defensive key was activity. You know, when the five of us play with activity, it leads to um, shots that we, we they, they don't want to take out of rhythm, and then we can have a better job tracking the rebounds. Um, and it's got to be a collective effort, you know, we've, we, we know that. Um, and so Alyssa, Tati, and Anya pulled down a lot of rebounds tonight, and that was important. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're going to shoot the way we're going to shoot, we're going to have to rebound and defend. So. We don't care how we win, like guys, we just want to win. So we want one more one more point than they do. And uh, we did that again, four times in a row. Boom. All right, pretty good. One more, right in. Yeah. A question on Anya, just because I don't think she's been brought up a lot, but yeah. huge on the boards for you guys. Could you just talk about her impact? Yeah, I thought starting the game, she was excellent. You know, she, she, she rebounds really well defensively for her size. Um, and she gets her hands on balls. She's getting better at getting the outlet out the floor, um, you know, and uh, you know, I also thought she, she ran the floor pretty well tonight. You know, she's that key piece. She's got to be, she's got to have to guard. She has to guard kids sometimes four inches taller than her, um, night after night after night. And she's really gotten comfortable doing what we're asking her to do. And so these guys know where they need to be to take care of it. Um, and then her pursuit is really good. I think she, she reads the ball well and then goes and gets it. And that's really part of rebounding. Um, so yeah, an undersized kid getting nine rebounds uh, against Duke, she won't, she won't forget that one. Good. Boom! Thanks, guys.